All right, so let's go into the conclusion here. So Thomas Young's argument, we've established it, we've looked at some potential objections to it. So Young concludes that there are only two consistent stances. Either you can, uh, either both procreation and echogluttony are morally acceptable, or second, neither procreation nor echogluttony are morally acceptable. And uh, Young endorses the second claim here. Uh, Young argues that neither procreation nor echogluttony are morally acceptable from an environmental uh, protection perspective. He concludes that in most cases, having children is morally wrong. Now, let's look at a couple additional objections to this conclusion. First, if everyone acted morally by not having children, it would be a disaster, right? Uh, Young seems to be in favor of or, or is endorsing human extinction. This could be a, an argument to which he might say, um, it, it may be the case that everyone presently has an obligation to stop or at least reach, uh, reduce procreation, but this does not entail that we ought to go instinct. Right? Recall the shallow pond uh, with 100 people standing around it. Everyone there has an obligation to save a drowning child. But once someone has saved the child, the other 99 are no longer morally required to do so. Similarly, perhaps we all have a duty to curtail procreation. But once we get back down to a sustainable population, even if only some refrain from procreating, then none of us have this duty any longer. In short, we don't have duties to solve already solved problems. Second, it is true that if the next generation is much smaller than the present one, there will be a lot of problems to deal with. Economic hardship, a top-heavy elderly population who would deplete Medicare and Social Security funds, etc. But these harms are surely not as bad as the ones that would occur if we continue our present trend of exponential po uh, population growth. Another argument could be that this argument that Young is making proves too much. Now, for example, someone who starts a business is now responsible for E5, or probably more, like maybe E1 million, but clearly starting a business is not immoral, to which he might re reply, you know, so not necessarily. Young points out that industries and businesses can be positive contributors to society by producing goods and improving the level of well-being of its customers. While it is probably the case that Young's argument proves that some industries are doing something morally equivalent to echo-gluttony, it does not entail that all industries will fit that description. So even then we might ask, who is responsible for, say, Apple's environmental impact? The founder? Steve Jobs? Right? He's dead. The present CEO? Or maybe the responsibility gets divvied up among the consumers who buy their, their products. One more possible objection. This is virtue ethics. Virtue ethics tells us that the morally right action is defined by what the virtuous person would do, right? the person who's trying to do good. And the virtuous person always chooses the golden mean. This is the, the moderate action between the two extremes. For example, don't be a coward and don't be foolhardy, blindly rushing into danger. Rather, be brave. Don't starve yourself and don't be a glutton. Rather, consume in moderation. So perhaps we could take a virtue ethic stance here, pointing out that a virtuous person would not engage in echo gluttony as the Greens do, but rather echo moderation. And that is exactly what the Greys seem to be doing. Right? They're living a modest lifestyle. They're consuming an average amount. They're raising two children. This does not display any failure of virtue on their part. Right, so something to think about. What do you think? I'm going to end this lecture here.